Okay, get your packet and go to page three. I would like you to try the three problems here and then you're going to submit your answers on this video and then I will show you the answers to make sure you know how to do them. So you may want to hit pause and then answer the questions that come up next. Okay, well, you've submitted your answers, so let's see if they were right. The first one should be 2 cosine x, and that is where I showed my work here. I just changed this into um, sine divided by tan, which is sine over cosine. Then I went ahead and multiplied by the reciprocal, reduced, and added the two cosines together. The second one, hopefully you got the cosecant of x, and that is because when you use the uh, reciprocal of secant and change it into cosine, you can look at the formula for the difference of angles for cosine. So this is the couscous with the opposite sign in between. So once I evaluate those angles, I can realize that I just have sine x in the denominator, so 1 over sine x is going to be cosecant x. And this number three, I did not give you um, this one on the video as far as a multiple choice, so you can just check your answer here with mine. Now this one is a little more complicated because your values for x for angle A come out to be the square root of 15, and then the 7 and the 8 was given. So when you use the difference formula, couscous, you're just going to simply substitute in those values and then perform the operations. So the final answer that I got was this one right here. So now we're going to go through and see if we can understand how to come up with the formula for the sum and difference with sine. So yesterday we did cosine. Today we're going to do sine. Now it says recall the co-function for sine of 90 minus x is cosine of x. And that is really what we're going to use to determine the formula for sine. So we're going to start off with the cosine of 90 minus the sum of a plus b. So I'm really starting off with using sine a plus b, and I'm trying to come up with that formula. So I know that the sine of an angle, I'll just put the sine of theta, is equal to the cosine of 90 minus theta. So instead of using theta, I have a plus b as my angle that I'm representing. So now I'm going to go ahead and distribute the minus. So this is going to be the cosine of 90 minus a minus b. Now I can kind of treat this as the cosine of 90 minus a as one of my angles minus b. So if I do this, I'm going to now use the difference formula for cosine. So that's couscous. So it's the cosine of 90 minus a times the cosine of b plus the sine of 90 minus a times the sine of b. Now, if I go ahead and use my cofunction property, I know the cosine of 90 minus a is just the sine of a. And I know I can drop that cosine b down and the plus down. The sine of 90 minus a is the equivalent to the cosine of a, because remember, these are cofunctions, and then times the sine of b. So that is my formula that I can now write. So I'm just going to continue and rewrite it here. So the sine of a plus b is equal to the sine of a times the cosine of b plus the cosine of a times the sine of b. Now we call this a couscous sandwich. Because the cosines are in the middle, it's kind of like a sandwich with signs at the end. So a couscous sandwich with the same operation that you see here. So again, sine starts with an S, just think the same. Cosine has an O, think of opposite. So now we're going to apply the formula in these problems.
Okay, before we apply that formula, I want to go ahead and just make sure we understand how to get the sign of the difference of two angles, because that one was the sum. So to get the difference, we're simply going to use even and odd properties. So again, let's see if I can just distribute and expand the formula. So the couscous sandwich is going to be the sine of A times the cosine of negative B, and then the sine is the same, so I'm going to do plus that's going to be the cosine of A times the sine of negative B. So that's my couscous sandwich. Now I'm going to apply those even and odd properties. Well, cosine's even. And so that negative just goes away. And sine is odd. So that's going to affect my plus and turn it into a minus. And now I'm going to take away that negative since I put it in front. And so my difference formula for the sine of a minus b is the sine of a times the cosine of b minus the cosine of a times the sine of b. So again, notice my a, b, a, b. I have a couscous sandwich, and this sign is the same as this sign. So now we can apply it. All right, so for number one, find the exact value. So this is very similar to what we did yesterday, except we're dealing with the couscous sandwich. So I'm going to rewrite this in expanded form. So it's going to be the sine of 45 degrees times the cosine of 60. Plus, because that matches, this is the cosine of 45 times the sine of 60. So now I can just substitute those values in there, those exact values. I want to make sure we know these. And then I can multiply and write my answer in simplest form. So this is just the square root of 2 plus the square root of 6 all over 4. So that is my answer for number 1. Okay, number 2, same thing. This time, I'm going to expand by writing the sine, and we want to keep these in radians, pi over 2 times the cosine of pi over 3 minus the cosine of pi over 2 times the sine of pi over 3. Well, hopefully we remember, pi over 2 is 90 degrees. That ordered pair is going to be 0, 1. So the sine of pi over 2 is 1. The cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So this is all going to simplify to be just 1 half. Okay, the next one, number 3, I'm going to expand and get the sine of 60 times the cosine of 135 minus the cosine of 60 times the sine of 135. When I fill in those values, the sine of 60 is root 3 over 2. Be careful with the cosine of 135. Because that's in quadrant 2, it is going to be negative, And that reference angle is 45. Cosine of 60 is 1 half. Now the sine of 135 is positive root 2 over 2. So this is going to be negative root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. And again, you can write it separately. I just prefer not to. Now, 285. We have to think about the different ways we could write 285. So we can write it as a sum or a difference. I think most kids probably prefer to do the sum. So let's think of angles on the unit circle that add up to 285. So I'm just thinking, all right, if I come up with one angle, like 60 degrees, if I add 225, that will give me 285. Now, that is not the only Answer, I could choose 135 and 150. That is also 285. So there's a lot of choices that I have. I think I'm going to go ahead and do, let's do the 60 and the 225. So for that one, I will expand. That's going to be the sine of 60 times the cosine of 225. Now, because I did addition, it's going to be plus, and then it's the cosine of of 60 sine 225. So let's put in my values. That's root 3 over 2. Now this is third quadrant, so it's negative. And then that reference angle is 45. This is going to be 1 half. Again, third quadrant, so that's negative. 
So when you look, my final answer is going to look like this. So that was the answer to number four, which was the same answer that we got in number three. All right, so this one we're going to keep in radians. So now we have to think about we could do a sum, we could do a difference. I know that 2 plus 3 is 5, and if I put these over 12, that would work out. I also know that 9 minus 4 is 5, and if I put these over 12, that would work out. So there's lots of ways to do this. I'm going to do this one as a difference because... Typically, most kids will choose the sum. So let's do the sign of 9 pi over 12 minus 4 pi over 12. Well, that is going to be equal to the sign of, if I reduce, that is 3 pi over 4 minus pi over 3. So I'm going to expand into a couscous sandwich. So 3 pi, sine of 3 pi over 4 cosine pi over 3 minus, because I chose the difference, and then cosine 3 pi over 4 sine pi over 3. So let's see what that's going to look like when I put the values in. All right, 3 pi over 4 second quadrant, that's positive for sine. This is going to be 1 half. This is going to be second quadrant negative for cosine. And this is going to be root 3 over 2. So now, if I simplify this, it looks like positive root 2, my, well, a minus and a minus is a plus, plus the square root of 6 all over 4. And that is what I got. Okay, so this is page 4. Um, you should have these boxes drawn at least in your packet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and draw the reference angles. So let's first of all look at alpha. Well alpha is in the quadrant between pi over 2 and pi. That's the second quadrant. So let's go ahead and draw that in. So the sine of alpha is, and I'm just going to make this look like a segment. All right, four-fifths. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So let's put in my 4 over 5. So that's going to be 4 here and 5 here. So that'll be a negative 3. Now the cosine of beta right here is 12 over 13. So actually that's going to be in the quadrant between 2 pi and 3 pi over 2. Well, here's 2 pi if we go all the way around, and here's 3 pi over 2. So that's in the fourth quadrant. So let me draw that one in there. So that is going to be, it looks like it's 12 over 13. So that is x over r. So my 12 is horizontal, and my 13 is the radius. And this is a 5, 12, 13. So notice when I put the 5, it's going to go down as negative because it's going down. So that's kind of important to do that. And I'll put my box for my right angle. So now I've got these drawn. Let's go ahead and expand. So this is the sine of alpha times the cosine of beta plus the cosine of alpha times the sine of beta. So let's put in the fractions underneath. So the sine of alpha is given as 4 fifths. And I can look at my reference triangle. The cosine of beta, I do not know. Oh, yes, I do. It's 12 over 13. That's also given. And again, I can look at my reference triangle. The cosine of alpha is not given. That is negative 3 over 5. And the sine of beta is not given. That is negative 5 over 13. So when I combine these, it looks like I multiply, I get 48 over 65, and now this negative times a negative is going to be a positive, 15 over 65. So my final answer is going to be 63 over 65, and that is it. Just be careful that you don't write the sign of four-fifths. A lot of kids were doing that. The ratio is what the sign of the angle is equal to. It is not an angle. Now if I do the opposite and reverse this for the difference, really the only thing that is going to change is the sign in the middle. So I'm literally going to have a minus instead of a plus. 
So I'm just kind of writing everything out again, and then I'm going to put in the same exact values. So 4 fifths, and then 12 over 13, minus negative 3 fifths, negative 5 over 13. So again, what happens is I have three negatives in a row. Well, that's an odd number of negatives. So that's going to turn this into a minus. So now when I combine these, I am going to get 30 3 over 65 and that is my answer now let's see if we can do the proof so the proof is basically just expanding using the formula so the sine of 180 times the cosine of theta plus because it's the same the cosine of 180 times the sine of theta. I want to prove that that's negative sine theta. Well, 180 degrees, my ordered pair is going to be negative 1, 0. So the sine of 180 is 0. I know 0 times anything is 0. The cosine of 180 is negative 1. And so this is what I'm getting. And when I simplify, I certainly get negative sine theta. So I'll bring that down and show those two sides are equal. So that proof is really easy. It's just using the formula and expanding and then doing a little bit of simplifying. Now, number eight. This one tells you that the cosine of x is 4 fifths and x is a positive acute angle. That just means that x belongs to quadrant 1, positive and acute. Find the sine of x plus pi over 2. So let's expand that and see what happens. So the sine of x plus pi over 2. Let's see what that's going to look like. So it's the sine of x times the cosine of pi over 2 plus the cosine of x times the sine of pi over 2. Well, the cosine of pi over 2, again, that ordered pair at pi over 2 is going to be 0, 1. So that is simply 0. The cosine of x is also equal to four fifths because it tells me that here and the sine of pi over 2 is 1 so the answer is simply four fifths again I just substituted in the values for that one okay for number nine now this looks like a couscous sandwich so let's see that's gonna be a sign and what am I gonna do with these angles if it's a couscous sandwich it's the same so I'm going to subtract the angles and write it like that and so this is the sine of 30, which is equal to 1 half. So there's my exact value. Now the value here, if I want the sine of 3 pi over 2, I'll have to think about that. That's going to be associated with the ordered pair 0, negative 1. So the sine is the y, so negative 1. Now the cosine of 2 pi over 3, that is in the second quadrant, so it's negative, And it's going to be negative 1 half. So if I combine those, my exact value is negative 3 over 2. For number 11, I am going to have you answer this one on the computer. So what do you think the answer to 11 is? Go ahead and type it in. Okay, well hopefully you got A because this is not a couscous sandwich. This is just couscous. So you actually have to change that sign and subtract these angles instead of adding them. So the cosine of 80 minus 70 is simply the cosine of 10. All right, see if you can come up with the answer to 12. Hopefully you got that that's going to be the cosine of 80 plus 70. So that is the cosine of 150. So the answer for that one was B. Now for page 5, what I would like you to do, I'm just going to show you how to do one. I want you to finish this for homework and then I'm going to show you the book work. Um, this is basically expressing it as a monomial first and then we're going to try to get the exact value. So first we want a single expression and then we'll see if we can do exact values so this looks like couscous so if it's couscous then I'm going to do the opposite here which is 60 minus 15 now that's going to be the cosine of 45 and that has a value of root 2 over 2 now if you get confused with number 2 you can write it as the cosine pi over 6 times the cosine pi over 6 
minus the sine pi over 6 times the sine pi over 6. So clearly you can see this is nothing but couscous. So it's going to be the cosine of pi over 6 plus pi over 6 because I do the opposite there. So that's the cosine of 2 pi over 6 or pi over 3. And that has an exact value of 1 half. So see if you can come up with the rest of these answers, get the single monomial expression, and then if you can, get the exact value, and check your answers with mine. And then I want you to do uh, the 2 through 22 even here that's on the bottom of this. And then you can, again, check your answers with mine. And, okay, so when you check... Um, once you've done page 5, check your answers on Canvas, and then the bookwork is page 218, 2 through 24 even. We will have a quiz on Tuesday, and Monday we are learning tangent. So all three functions will be on the quiz.